It's the Weekend Show with Kenny Shelton. Well, you can do anything. I'm take you over my blue suede shoe. On the Virginia Talk Radio Network. Free on this Saturday afternoon. Kenny Shelton here on the Weekend Show. Thanks so much for listening to us. We're here at the Williamson Road location of Advance Auto with the Mobile Super for Long Engine Life baseball tour though go for the distance tour mike torres is here signing autographs and meeting fans we'd love for you to come out and see mike and also enjoy some great food from the castro truck global curb cuisine right now I want to bring in a man to the radio that's actually been on this show he's been the most uh, he's been the, the most frequent guest we've ever had on the weekend show and that was you dan mcdermott good hello dan how are you today good morning i think i should get a big raise maybe 50 percent raise I, well i'll talk to management about that i think i will <laughs> Dan is a publisher. Absolutely. Dan's a publisher, and you see him online all the time on his Facebook page and with Google. And, uh, Dan, we'd like to talk about some of the topics making news whenever you're on with me. And it's been described as she has tire tracks on her back because she's been thrown under the bus. And I'm talking about Maureen McDonald, this Bob McDonald trial. Man, what, what, what can we say today to kind of assess what's happened so far on that? It's really crazy. I, you know, he was offered a plea deal, one charge. And, and this is typically what they do. They they offer you that, and then if, if you don't agree to it, then they give you, a, you know, 17 or however many federal charges he got. This is really, I guess, the crazy wife defense is what one of my writers used. That quote you're talking about, probably Larry Sabato, he said, McDonald trial day 17, this is on August 19th, he said, more, more proof chivalry is dead. Ex-first lady Maureen is given more shoves under a bus, and it's a London double-decker. And then my favorite... No first lady has been treated so badly since Mary Todd Lincoln was committed to an asylum by her own son. This is a, the testimony from his side, or from him, that when he f first was getting ready to be governor, won the election, this is the White House, please hold for the president. The president introduced himself by his first name, and they talked for about seven minutes, and he said, you know, we really need to work together, that sort of thing. And he said, wow, you know, I I've entered a new phase of my life. That that'd be kind of overwhelming. And his wife was like screaming about, oh, what am I going to wear? What, what kind of clothes him up? He said she, she wasn't really as happy about it as I was, the governor speaking. At one point, there was a chief of staff or secretary of the Commonwealth, whatever it was. There was some high cabinet member uh, that, that Bob McDonald asked, you know, will you serve on my cabinet in this key role? And the person said, I'll do it under one condition. I don't have to deal with your wife. And he agreed to that. Now, that's very telling. I adore your wife, but to use her as an example, if, if, if you wanted to hire me as programming director or general manager for that state, for your network there, and I said, as long as I don't have to deal with your wife, that would be a real turnoff to you, right? Because you, that doesn't make any sense. But for, for her to be as out there as they describe, and for him to agree, okay, you could be the secretary of whatever, and it's cool, you don't have to deal with my wife. It's a de facto acknowledgement that something's amiss there. Again, this is testimony from his side. And, and what does he gain? From, I mean, I realize he's basically fighting for his freedom here, but I mean, with that kind of defense, it will, that will, will that really help him? Because, I mean, his political career is over. P political career is done. I mean, he's not going to be in any more elections. And if he were, I mean, the women would just not think about voting for a second because, you know, chivalry apparently is dead with, with this guy. He's not, he's not being, uh, you know, at all... Uh, thoughtful towards the, the wife and all uh, and what, what does he where does he go from here after all this he doesn't go anywhere except jail i guess there there's no law against receiving gifts of any amount in virginia on the state level if you're a federal officer it's different you do have to disclose them so the question is did he know everything did he perform anything that he would not have for other companies and i'm sure he can show a laundry list of different companies he helped i remember he made an appearance uh several i think for that furniture company that's in Lynchburg. That African guy who came over and he's like a rags to riches story and he built this factory and he's creating jobs. Exactly. Thomas A. Johnson, I think his name is or something. Yes, we know him. Yes. So can they prove that there was a quid pro quo, that he did something that he would not have done for other businesses and, and did it in exchange for, for money, right? It's also very expensive to be a governor. The Commonwealth doesn't pay. We saw all this stuff. They were arguing about he can't charge this breakfast supplement. He has to pay for it himself. They they have to buy their own suits, obviously, unless, you know, Johnny Williams is going to hook, hook your wife up with some fancy uh, dresses. So I'm not at all convinced he's going to be convicted. I'm not convinced he isn't. I wouldn't, I'm not ready to, ready to write his obituary just yet, because as long as Al Sharpton survived the Tawana Brawley mess and has his own show on MSNBC, I'd say anybody can come back from the dead. 
Well, and I'll grant you that stranger things have happened. And when the, the darkest comes before the dawn, all the things they say and this type of thing. And we're, we're still, of course, curious how that, that trial is going to wrap up. You've got a story right there in your own backyard, Dan McDermott, that you wrote, wrote about on Facebook that uh, you shared with everyone. And it involves gypsies, witches, and uh, little shades of the supernatural. And apparently there's a big debate there about that, correct? Oh, yeah. We, <laughs> okay, it all started. There are some archaic codes in the Front Royal Town Code. Front Royal Town Council is, I published the number one newspaper here, they are the gift that keeps on giving. The squabbles they have, the, just the crazy things. It, it's just unbelievable. There's a ban on the magic arts and gypsies. If anyone wants to see this, you can go to our website, warrencountyva.com or frederickcounty.com. I'll give you the code number in a minute. So if you're interested, then get your pens ready. So here's the actual town code. It shall be unlawful for any company of gypsies or other strolling company or person to receive compensation or reward for pretending to tell fortunes or to practice any so-called magic art. Every person violating this section shall be guilty of a misdemeanor and fined not less than $500 or confined to jail not less than one, nor more than six months or by such fine and imprisonment. For every license for a person engaged in business as a fortune teller, clairvoyant, phrenologist, spirit medium, astrologist, hypnotist or palmist there shall be paid a license tax of not more than 400 or 400 dollars a year and th these are town codes 110-17 and 98-42 in the front royal virginia town code I, I don't know anything about tarot card reading except they have cards and it's you know your something dark is going to happen i have no idea how that works i would not know a gypsy if if one came up and punched me or a company of traveling gypsies but it's kind of a pejorative term apparently there is some sort of faith-based counseling thing where they use fortune telling or clairvoyance as a way of i don't know I, I have no clue i think it's to each his own but they they went crazy and there were like 50 people in and we've been writing about this my view is people have a right to be stupid we had the psychic friends network on television and dion warwick you know call this number and be a couple hundred dollars and they'd tell your future it, in my opinion it's all nonsense but you have a right to be stupid how many times have we bought them as seen on tv product and it turned out to be garbage right it does so, seem to be a bit backward I, yeah yeah so i mean to each his own you know and and apparently there are pagans i don't i don't know exactly how that works but there are pagans here there's actually like a pagan She's introduced herself, I'm Reverend so-and-so from the local pagan church or whatever. Basically, it's, if you're not exactly like me, I want you banned. The town attorney said, this is clearly unconstitutional, and we do not enforce this, so we should strike it from the town code. And one of the people shouted down the councilman and said, God trumps the Constitution, her version of God, right? Then NBC News and DC's picked this up, so it's will probably be national. Our last big national thing was the alleged White House gate crasher, I have to say alleged and then real, how, reality TV star lives here, known her for 20 years. Believe it or not, half of the town council voted to preserve the law after the town attorney said it's blatantly constitutional and, and our police department and won't enforce it and I won't prosecute it. It's hard to believe because there are a lot of laws on books in a lot of towns that, that are just silly, like you're not allowed to tickle someone or, or, or this or that, the other, they're just crazy. But for that to be brought up and then, <laughs> and then upheld, that you still can't do that. I mean, you should be aware. I mean, you go into a gypsy or, or a tarot card reader or a palm reader and you know you know what you're getting into and by the way dan we should not call them gypsies that is an offensive term much like the washington redskins are in trouble we should call them roma or romani uh the, an ethnicity of indian origin living mostly in europe and the americas so that, be, that would be roma no longer gypsy if you please sir absolutely and i just saw a tweet from, from Rome, jim romanesco who's a writes about journalism blogs about it apparently the washington post editorial board is no is decided not to use the term redskins so it's sort of like that the ice bucket challenge it's sort of a race for everyone to jump on and my favorite quote was from mark mosley who i think was the only may still be the only nfl kicker to get mvp after the super bowl and he said no yellow no red person has ever complained to me about that name whites have blacks have no red person's ever said it you know so, some kind of it was humorous he's a good guy he's a local guy i'll give you another code here this is 110-12 the language is interesting here it's titled vending machines used to sell drugs or devices to prevent venereal diseases the offering for sale distribution or other disposition by means of a vending machine or other automated machine of any kind of any drug medical preparation device or other article intended or having special utility for the prevention of venereal disease is expressly prohibited any such vending machine or other automatic machine shall be destroyed when found in violation. Any person who violates is guilty of a misdemeanor. So you can immediately destroy a vending machine that prevents venereal disease. 
these i mean i don't know what year these things were written yeah you gotta wonder and, and what's that where's that uh, that um, source you had for the website if people look at some more of these uh these uh <laughs> codes sure if you go to frontroyalva.com frontroyalva.com the the one i just did which i assume is aimed at prophylactics is code 110-12 they've got a pretty nice search thing there you can just put in like fortune teller gypsy the other codes are 110-17 and 98-42 and you know not only are they do they have strong opinions on this but they were saying stuff like this is going to cause you know communists and homosexuals to come and recruit our children and we'll be raped and pillaged because you know some moron is going to sit there and have their fortune told doesn't make any sense and they they're really angry they attacked us viciously i think one person this is hilarious they said refer to my warren county report newspaper as that that sorry birdcage liner excuse for a rag or something one went on for about three minutes just viciously attacking my senior writer who's been covering this in the town meeting to the point where the mayor ended up calling him and apologizing for allowing it to go on so long and this is all on video if you want to look at the town it's the it's a public hearing three or four days ago and you can go there and it's just really unbelievable that in 2014 it's it almost is like if you watched a video from the 40s or 50s of segregationists like in, in Warren County they literally shut the public schools down rather than let black kids in then they the cops dropped them off at the side because I interviewed one of the one of the first students in um, she's elderly lady now but she was a young black girl the taunts and ridicule from the parents of the other kids we were on a long line as they were entering the school. It kind of reminds me of that. And I go back to that, the title from a chapter in Howard Stern's first book, Anyone Who's Not Just Like Me, I Hate. <laughs> you know, if, you, if, if it does bring to light uh, the code there in, uh, in Front Royal, I wonder if the exposure this uh, particular store is getting is going to cause uh, some more attention to some of the uh, seemingly outdated codes in other towns across the nation. Dan McDermott, you can find Dan on Facebook. This particular store you want to check out. A lot of comments, a lot of action, a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of uh, people are interested in this. You can see him on Facebook, Dan McDermott. And Dan, thanks so much for being on the weekend show as always. Have a great rest of your weekend, sir. Always a pleasure. See you in a week. Living in the sweet Virginia.